The planets we saw orbiting our star last time had mostly circular orbits, but not every object in space has such a symmetric orbit. Comets, for example, have very distorted orbits coming in from far away and approaching very closely to the star before they turn around and head right back. This is why seeing a comet on Earth is so rare, because they spend so much of their time far away from us. The shape of an object's orbit is directly determined by the amount of energy associated with its orbit. When an object is farther away from a star, it's pulled toward the star by the force of gravity. But when the object gets closer, the conservation of angular momentum causes the object to move more quickly, flinging it away from the star. While this flinging away isn't really a force, it sure does act like one. The competition of these two influences leads to a minimum in the energy that an orbiting object can have. When an object's energy is near the minimum, its distance from the star can't vary too much, leading to a very circular orbit. But when an object's energy is closer to zero, its distance can vary wildly, leading to the type of orbit that a comet has. In this code, which is available at a link in the description below, we've added a comet to our planetary system. We're also checking the energy of each of our celestial objects by adding their kinetic energy to the potential energy between each object and the star. For simplicity, we'll omit the potential energy between the planets and the comet since those don't contribute much. Notice that the comet's energy is much closer to zero than the planet's, and so it has a much more squished orbit. But of course, a wild orbit isn't the only thing comets are known for. Comets have tails created by radiation from the sun energizing particles on the comet. Here, we've added a tail that follows the comet and points away from the sun. Next time, we'll examine how the energies we calculate at the beginning of the code stay constant throughout the simulation.